scared her heart was about racing at 90 miles an hour. It looked like she was up home a while ago and she was in the room trying to hum it over and fix it over. And, well, what's in the mind of Brother Moore when he was a little boy? He said he wanted to preach. He was about seven or eight years old. He kept saying, Pappy, I want to preach. So one night before the congregation, Mr. Moore said, Now, folks, said, uh, David sitting here, sitting up there like an old clergyman, you know, and his head all up. He said, He wants to preach a little while tonight. So he ran up to the platform, jumped down out of his chair, run up there, you know, and stopped. And he thought he'd just tear right into it. And he looked one way and the other. Said, it just won't work. He went back and said, I've seen a lot of times I thought it wouldn't work. <laughs> so just, <laughs> that was all right. <laughs> Their mothers used to sing for us, Mabel and Smeedy. I'd like to hear them sing again sometime, wouldn't you? I'd just like to hear them sing. Uh, maybe we'd get them to team up next Sunday night and sing the song for me they sang when I left the church. You remember when it was, what it was? The sands has been washed in the yeah. footprints, a stranger, and then they'll come from the east and west. Let's see, the feast with the king, to dine as his guest. I think that's the way it goes. We like to hear them. How many like to hear them about next Sunday night if we're around? Yeah. 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 Mabel, are you here? Is she here, Doc? She hears that Meaty's back there, so they can practice up a little because the girls will go to uh, run away from them after a while, won't they? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I have to practice a little now and get started this next week. Tonight, coming down, and just a few moments ago, the family left, and I was alone with the Lord to pray a little. I drove down past the old tabernacle and seen the cars lined up out there. You know, it just brings back old memories of a long time ago. When you used to have in here, come in, and have great services and last till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. The people just stepped around together. You know, uh, many of those old timers are up here in the grave today. I mean, they're bodies, but they're in glory. Amen. And generations keep coming on, the younger ones moving up. Won't be long till we'll be gone. The other generation, the other younger, take our place. So it behooves us to live every day, doesn't it? Just for the Amen. Lord, Him alone. Now, I know tomorrow is a work day for the people who have to get out and go to work. So we're trying to let out early tonight. Is the baptismal service anything to follow this? All right. Now, <clears throat> this blessed old Bible is the road map to, from the cradle to, to the grave and to heaven all the way through. And we love it because the contents of this is where we find the plan of salvation to save to the uttermost. Now, before we open it, let's speak to the author while we bow our heads just a moment. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for all that has been done already in the service, for the hymns and for the, all that has already taken place. And we're grateful tonight to be assembled here under the roof of this little building in the name of the Lord Jesus with this gracious promise that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. And we know that Thou art here. And we're so happy to know that after 1900 years of gospel preaching and, and the world's history moving around, yet thou remains the same. Changing of time, changing of people, changing of nations, changing of desires and attitudes, but thou remains the same. And we're so glad of that tonight, Father. For we are glad that we can read your word and see what you were then and know that we're approaching the same loving, forgiving, understanding Father that once walked the sandy shores of Galilee, crucified, taken our place, and became a sinner and died at the cross in our stead to take upon himself our sins, to bear them away, and was cast into hell. And the prophet had said, I'll not leave his soul in hell, neither will I suffer my Holy One to see corruption. And on the third day arose again and ascended on high, where you step tonight at the right hand of the majesty of God, to make intercessions upon our confession. And we have a right and a privilege to confess 
that our own personal property that's been bought by your blood, anything that you included in your redemption plan when you died and made the atonement at Calvary. And tonight, Father, we ask a special blessing for every pilgrim that's gathered under the roof here tonight in the tabernacle. We ask also, Father, for the men and women, boys and girls who are outside of the ark tonight that doesn't know you. We pray that you'll be with them and draw them to thee tonight, and may the Holy Spirit knock specially at their heart and woo them to God our Father. Grant it, Lord. Bless every church and every meeting that's going on throughout the whole world today and tonight. And may all the ministers be inspired to preach and the people's heart and ears circumcised to hear and to understand that God will receive glory. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing tonight as we come to the cross to teach a little on the Word. This is kind of a Sunday school lesson. You know, I was thinking a while ago, sitting up there, you know, it would be a marvelous thing sometimes if uh, there's a big empty building down in the city here, the old Dream Theater. I imagine it'll seat 1,500 to 2,000 people. And it would be very nice if we could have some time or maybe a continuation of several Sundays in succession, about five weeks, and have a Sunday afternoon uh, healing service in the old Dream Theater down here and broadcast the service over one of the local stations for an hour. Don't cost very much, about nineteen, twenty dollars something like that Amen. for an hour. I'd be glad to pay for it myself. And that's my meetings out there sponsored just for the people around here to be brought in. Amen. And a good place to send them for the converts. And you know, as I so enjoyed the message of our pastor this morning about fainting. And um, I know you all did. And that's right. And, as, and we've got to get the fishes in the net, as he said. And that's right. You have to get the fish in the net. And then together uh, we stand. Now, I was last evening at Brother Junior. Cash, I believe his name is. We were up there to speak for him last evening, and the Lord came down in a marvelous way. And they brought a girl. The only thing that I see that could have been naturally that you could have seen with your eye that was at the platform was a colored girl from down in the lower part of Indiana, below New Albany or somewhere, had been in an accident and had severed the nerves in the ear and the vocal that she could not speak or hear. And a vein had been clamped off somewhere that paralyzed her side. And the girl, her mother, and her with a big brace is trying to lead her up there, just a young girl, Lassie, and probably 16, something on that order. And somehow or other, the Holy Spirit just seemed to place Africa right in front of me. And I looked at it, and I have a vision wrote right here in the book that the return to Africa will be far greater than the first African meeting. Amen. And then the people not knowing what was going on, but a vision taking place. And I said, Heavenly Father, not that we ask for miracles. The Bible said a weak and adulterous generation seeks after miracles. And we don't seek after miracles, but God performs miracles right at the same time. Amen. He said that he was performing miracles. But if we seek after them, have to have miracles, something to show us, some evidence that, that we are saved or something like that. I don't believe in evidences. I believe the evidence that we are saved, we took God at his word. That's the best thing I know. Amen. And then the fruits follow. Amen. Now, I asked him if he would just grant it as a, as a sign that it was time to return back to Africa, which our contacts are getting stronger all the time. And when we prayed for that girl, she could speak and hear, and was, it was just marvelous yeah. to see what our Lord could do. And so we're happy tonight for that, and know that that lovely home everywhere it's at is very happy tonight to see that girl. How did it happen when the nerves were all cut off from it? See, no way at all. No, nothing is done, cut and clamped off. The nerve to the tongue or the vocal and to the hearing, which are both on the same nerve. but. It was severed by the accident. But God, in some way, how many was there who heard the girl speak? Let's see here. That's right. 
and she could speak and hear and talk. I'd talk like this. I said, do you hear me? Said, yeah. <laughs> you hear me again? I said, say mama. She said, mama. I said, say Jesus. She said, Jesus. And go right ahead and talk. So the Lord is wonderful, isn't he? Amen. Full of mercy. And then being out from the healing services now for two weeks, it kind of got my heart pounding to good again, for, ready for another service. Now, over in the book of Numbers, I love the Old Testament. We're going to have a lesson tonight on uh, the book of Numbers. Numbers, the 13th chapter and the 30th verse. Just read one verse for a basic and for a beginning. And then you see if we read one verse out of the Bible, I know this one thing, my word will fail because I'm a man. But that word of God will never fail because it's the word of God. Amen. And so one verse out of here will give enough foundation that every person coming will be blessed because just no more than reading of the word. Amen. Now, in the 30th verse, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. And may the Lord add his blessings to the word. Now, my subject tonight is at Kadesh Barnea. And this uh, subject that we have under consideration for just a little background to bring up to the spot to where, if the Lord willing, all this, of course, is never premeditated. It's just spoken by inspiration, just as it's given. I never had schooling to learn how to prefix, and I've tried it four or five times and really made an awful mess out of it. I, I just don't know how to do it. But I do love him, and I depend on him, and I know you all do too. So now, in the beginning, this is a picture that God, a great drama of the Bible, that God has set in order here for us for that by this we might prosper. I believe over in Hebrews, the 10th chapter or the 12th chapter, said, seeing that we are compassed about by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, that we might run with patience the race that's set before us, looking to the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all the Old Testament and all of its characters and characteristics was only a foreshadow of the, the wedge or the keystone, the New Testament, that join law and this dispensation together. Many people have referred to this as the Christian dispensation, but it isn't. This is the Holy Spirit dispensation. Amen. The Christian dispensation lasted three years and six months. The law uh, lasted for several hundred years. And then the Christian dispensation was what bridged or keystoned the New and Old Testament together. And many times over in the Bible we see and many times referred to the Acts of the Apostles, it's called. I always like to refer to it as the act of the Holy Spirit in the apostles. Amen. Because the apostles were just man, but it was the Holy Spirit in the apostles yes. bringing forth his move. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that has descended upon the church to continue the works of the Lord Jesus Amen. and his going away. It is to give the gospel light in a lesser light than it was when Christ was here. Like the moon and the sun, the moon comes up to give a light in the absence of the sun until it can rise again. Then the moon goes out and the sun is such a brighter light that it puts out the moonlight. But what is the moonlight? It's a reflection of the sun on the moon. And that is like Christ. when. He was here. He was the light of the world. He went away and shining back on his church to reflect his light. Amen. And to the world today for light to walk in until he returns and then all and all will be given unto him. Amen. And he will sit on the throne of King David and reign forever and forever. Amen. Now, 
the Old Testament being a beautiful type, we type there and see all those things happen to the people that we might look for examples. Now, God being sovereign, and as I have just was teaching today in a home where I was invited out for dinner, they wanted to know if they would know their loved ones when they met them in glory. Well, I said, certainly we will know them. See, we, we, are in a, we are, have three different bodies we dwell in. One is the human, the other is the celestial, and the other is the glorified. And then if we know one another in the human body, the mortal body, how much more will we know it? each other in a glorified body. Yeah. It's like if the law could produce a good thing, how much greater thing can grace produce? Because yeah. it's greater than the law. And if the moon can produce a certain part of light, how much more will the sun outshine it when it comes? And we'll certainly know each other. And now it's just like, as I say, we keep growing in knowledge. The human being, you know more now than you did when he's a little boy or girl because you get wiser, and the whole human race gets wiser. But did you notice the animal kingdom never gets any wiser? You know you live in a better house now than your grandfather did, and probably your children are living in a far better house than you have now. But just recently, I believe in the Reader's Digest or somewhere, I was reading an article of where they'd taken a little wren and put her in a cage with nothing to build a nest by. And she had to lay her eggs on the cage floor. And they hatched out the little wrens, and they taken them little wrens and put them in a cage without anything to build a nest. When they hatched them out to 15 generations, 15 different generations to see if it would change the nature, then that would take 15 years because the wrens only have one nest of eggs a year. And after 15 years, they turned the other little wren loose of its successors of, of 15 years had never had a straw to build her nest, nothing, and put this little wren in a place, and the first thing she'd done was take off and build a nest. The birds build their nest just like they did in the Garden of Eden. But man keeps progressing, keeps getting more, wiser. The whole, your grandfather, as I said, went to see their grandmother in an ox cart. Your daddy went to see mother driving a horse and buggy. I went to see my wife in a Model T Ford. My boy's got an eight-cylinder speedway, <laughs> what you call it. Probably the grandchildren have a jet plane. <laughs> That's the way we keep progressing because we have a soul. Now, the bird doesn't have a soul, but we have a soul. We are not a creator, but we can pervert. Now, we can't create timber, but we can take timber after God has created and make a house out of it because we're offsprings of God, sons and daughters of God. No matter how fallen we are, still we have to recognize that we are sons and daughters of God. In our fallen estate, we're still sons and daughters. God makes a promise. God has to keep that promise. Oh, I hope you see it. If you could only understand church tonight and realize you wouldn't be going from pillar to post and joining this church and that church you wouldn't be seeking after the things of the world to bring pleasure to you. You wouldn't be seeking from one healing service to another. You could take God at his word and know that it's over. Amen. Certainly. When God makes a promise, he cannot move from that promise. He's, he's duty-bound to keep his word. I heard someone saying, well, they, they would backslide and back, and that you could do that. Well, I'm lost out with God. If you were ever found with him, you'll never be lost with him, because God can't save you and then turn his back on you and turn you away. If he would, he defeats his own purpose. So he can't do that. So when God, we getting wiser, but God was infant to begin with. Amen. He was perfect. He never gets any wiser. He's always the same. So if a certain crisis arises and God acted such and such a way at that crisis, then if the same crisis arises again, if he doesn't act in the same way, he acted wrong when he acted here. See? Right. So he has to be the same all the time, regardless of any age and how people can explain and try to take away the power of deity. I can't understand it. 
Because if Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, his power is the same, his attitude is the same, and just as he was then, he is now and will be forever. You just can't take nothing from him. That's all. And if he rose in the days of his earthly journey and healed the sick that was beyond doctor's care and healed them, if he acted that way in that crisis, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's got to act Amen. the same way today, or he did wrong to them people. Amen. If he made a promise there and had to stay with it, he makes Amen. a promise here, he's got to stay with it. Amen. He's just got to. Amen. There's nothing wrong with God and with his promise. The wrong is in us. Amen. Not Amen. faith to believe it or to take him at his word. Amen. Now, you see, if we had the gumption of the birds, we'd act like they did in the beginning. But we get so smart, we explain all the word away and say, oh, it was in a day past, and we build another kind of a situation. Instead of taking God at his word, we just start a new organization. See? Well, this is the way God will do it. That's the way God will do it. If we were just like the birds and didn't change and wasn't on the basis of free moral agency, we would just take God at his word, and that would settle it. And that's all. God said so, so that's all there is to it. How beautiful it is Amen. to find that the true and living God still lives today. Amen. In the midst of all the chaos, still God lives and reigns. Now, this coveted people, Israel, down in, in Egypt on account of disobedience and of selling their brother Joseph and was taken down into Egypt and was there for hundred years under bondage. I want you to notice, they never lost their covenant. They lost their freedom, not their covenant. When God made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he swore by himself that he would save Abraham and his seed after him, God's duty bound to keep that promise. And he's just as duty bound to you on that promise as he was to Abraham on the promise. That's right. If you're Abraham's seed, how do you become Abraham's seed? We that are dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed, says the Bible, and are heirs according to the promise. Then God's just as duty bound to you as he was to Abraham. Hey, that would take all the scare out of it. God don't want you to be scared of nothing. Rest solemnly upon what they said. Amen. What we need today is some man that a challenge the hour that we live in. That's right. In the day when discrepancy and everything else is creeped in under the name of religion and so forth and under the name of salvation, the gospel, we need somebody to be raised up among us like God raised up Moses to take the place right. in that day. Right. Yes, they had lost their covenant. They had lost their freedom. They were slaves, but the covenant still lasted. And one day down there, when they were groaning and crying, honor the taskmasters of Egypt because they had become slaves. I want you to notice this beautiful picture, and this would be good for legalists. Listen, God never come down and said, now, if you'll do certain things, if you'll do certain things, God's grace provided a Savior, Moses. Amen. That's right. Not only any conditions was Moses brought, but by sovereign grace God sent Moses. Not only a Savior, but grace provided a deliverer without any law, without anything. Just solemn grace of God. He sent down Moses to be a, a deliverer and a Savior of the nation Amen. to bring them out. When I think of that, then I begin to remember that the same God that was with the coveted people in Egypt is surely under all the strain and the indifference that the church is in tonight. He will, by the grace of his own being, send a deliverer. Amen. We're just as certain to get an outpouring of the Holy Spirit Amen. in these last days as we're sitting in this church tonight. Amen. God has acted to the covenant people without any effort of theirs, but he sent freely from heaven uh, to his covenant people Amen. an act of grace upon the sovereignty of his promise. Praise he sent Moses. 
And in the same crisis, when the people is in bondage and in under everything, the yoke of sin and sickness and trouble today, he's just as certain to send Jesus Christ the second time as he sent Moses in the first time. When the crisis arose, God acted in sovereign grace. He's got to do the same thing under the same act. Or he did wrong when he acted back there. You see it? Amen. What I'm trying to get at is this. The greatest sin I find in the church today is unbelief. That's the only sin there is. There's no other sin but unbelief. How much of that is night out there? How much is dark? You could say this much is dark, or right in my hands is all dark. Now there's only one way to designate and to determine sin. That isn't by whether you drink or whether you smoke or whether you gamble. It's designated this way. Because you are an unbeliever, you do that. And that's true. Because you gamble, because you lie, because you steal. Those things are not sin. That's the result of sin. That's because that in you dwells a different spirit. If you are the believer, a firm believer, those things will be as dead and dark as the night is before you. Amen. Certainly. See, those things are attribute of unbelief. In St. John, the third chapter, Jesus said that he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. You don't even get the first base. You're condemned to begin with. So it doesn't mean that you have to have a measure stick in your church. If you do this, if you measure up to these rules, if you measure up to that rule, many times people will lay aside little things like that to belong to a church. And the things still in their heart just slip around and do it. But when a man has met God's requirements and been born again of the Spirit of God, those things are tucked out of his life. He doesn't want to do them. Could you imagine a pig? The pig will go to the pile of manure and he'll eat. I don't blame him. He's a pig. That's what makes him do it. But you'll never get a lamb to do that because there's two natures. The pig has one nature and the lamb has another nature. And as long as you can keep that same nature in that pig, no matter how you try to clean him up, he'll be the same nature because he's a pig to begin with. Therefore, a lot of times we take people and bring them into church and so forth like that, make them members when they've never become saved. That's the reason today that such a mix-up is in the face of the people. They don't know which way to turn. They see people professing Christianity and no different from the world. Is because a person has never come in contact or ever been born again, never accepted the Lord Jesus, never believed on him. They might have been worked up, they might have danced, they might have shouted, they might have spoke with tongues, they might have done all these things, but never come to the person Christ Jesus and actually been born again in their heart. These things die out. My nature is changed, and a new person is born. Now, when Moses had become of age. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. After that, he slew the Egyptian. But God was with him out at Midian and brought him back. And in the face of that burning bush that day, he received an experience that stayed with him as long as he lived. And as I said last night, so I say today, that man, no matter how good Moses was taught, how much theology he knows, how good a church member he was, and he had a good teacher mother. He was brought up under the, every precept of education that could be brought. He was a right. king's son. Amen. But he still, trying in himself, failed to make it go over. But in five minutes in the presence of the burning Amen. bush, he become a new person. Amen. Something happened. And what we need today in our seminaries, it's not so much theology to be taught, but on a burning bush experience. Amen. Where man get down before God and meet him face to face. We need a challenger today like we had in that day. What we need is men and women who's met God and know what they're talking about. Not somebody trying to teach them some church book or some open theology. What we need today is a man that's been in the presence of the burning bush and has been born again and changed and made a new creature. That's the type of person we need today. That's the kind of person who will stay on the firing line regardless of what comes or goes. Moses, after he received his commission, went down into Egypt and delivered the children of Israel. 
One great mistake we find in one great thing, as it was in that day, so is it today. When we find out that Moses went out and got the children of Israel and brought them out, the phenomenal had been done. Now here it is, I don't want to hurt you, I don't want to shake you, or jerk the hide from you, but I wish to preach the truth. There's one thing about it, brother, the truth will never make you popular, but the truth will make you honest. That's one minute thing. And who have you rather be honest than be popular? Certainly you have. Now, I want you to know that when the phenomena were done, miracles were performed, signs and wonders, and when they went out, the Bible said a mixed multitude went out. A mixed group of people. Some of them believers, some pretending to believe. The, the great miracles have been done. People went out as professed believers. And they was not believers. And that's where a great bunch of our trouble lays today. We could put our finger on it. It's men and women who come into the church and profess to be believers, and they're not believers. Amen. I've counted in a pulpit. I've counted in a prayer line. I've counted everywhere. Or men come in and women who said, I am a believer and profess to be a believer, and they're not believers. And that's what started Israel's trouble. When they got to a place that they found out these people went out, sure, the supernatural had been done. That's what we find in our rims today in our churches. God has come on the scene. He heals the sick. He's raised the dead. He's opened the eyes of the blind. He makes the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. He heals the cripples. He takes cancers away from the people. We, that cannot be denied. Amen. That's by the thousands. One time it started from right here on 8th and Penn Street and now around the world. Amen. With 10,000 revival fires burning on the hills of every heathen nation and everywhere else. Amen. Signs and wonders are being done. Amen. Great things are moving. God on the move. We're at the end time. The junction time. But we find out in this goes a mixed multitude. Many times people go out saying, yes, I am. I'll do this. And we find out that those people were carnal. Just as soon as the first little strain comes, they desire to go back into Egypt. They wanted the garlic pot. They wanted the fish out of the river. They wanted the leek and the garlic. They wanted the things that they had down in Egypt. That's a beautiful and a perfect type of the carnal church member today. He loves the things of the world because he's not of God. The Bible said if you love the world and the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. Amen. And Christ is right in all of his statements. And that's true. And today we find people going out, oh, I wish God somehow could put this on the left side Amen. or the fifth rib and tamp it down. A man, no matter how much you try to pretend, when it comes to a strain, a man will show his best and worst part under strain. Amen. Take a Christian sometime and throw him under a strain. Watch how he acts, and you can tell what he's made out of it. Uh, Everybody can go good. Everybody can praise the Lord while the Holy Spirit's are falling in a congregation of people. But let trouble arise and watch what takes place. Amen. Watch what happens then. Yeah. Now, are you following around? Are you one of the mixed multitude? Are you the person who can't, as the street expression say, can't take it? That's it. You can't stand up to it. Brother, if you cut that way, backslidings and ups and downs and ins and outs, why don't you come to Calvary and die out to yourself Amen. and be born again of the Spirit of God? Amen. Amen. Shame on you, you who profess Christianity. You who live in your churches, we have no members here. You just come here. You belong to all different churches. But you people who profess to be Christians and live something else like that you're not, you're an indebted to the society of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Amen. You who profess to be Christians and are ashamed to take him at his word or testify to his power and glory at any time, Amen. you're an indebted to the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's true. Thank God. That's right. Turn to the word. Sacred ground. Stand on his word. Abraham had to do it and call those things which were not as though they were. And he pleased God. And it was imputed Amen. unto him for righteousness. What we need today is a wishbone out of the backbone, but in Christianity. 
It's there the thing we need is some born again Christian neighbor. Men and women who will, when they see trouble arising, not slip off, not fall off, not run out this way, be partakers of it. But a man or woman who will stand and show their colors. Even your friends will appreciate you more if you'll do that. What man is he that don't appreciate a woman? Let her be as ugly as a pimp made of mud and dot with tadpoles. Let her be as ugly as she may be, but let her be lady and character enough to stand for the woman moral. And then our man in the country will want to take off his hat to her if he's got an ounce of man in him. Amen. And a man thinks that being a fallen son of God, what will God himself think of a man who will stand upon his convictions? To call right, right, and wrong, wrong. What we need today is a good old time St. Paul's revival and the Bible Holy Ghost back into the church again. Amen. And so much of this wishy-washy carrying on in the name of Christianity taken away. So much denomination, so much theology, so much education. I'm not trying to support people don't walk anyhow as crippled as the church is. Amen. There it is. As crippled as the church is. Education's not your crutch. Your faith is your crutch. Amen. 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 Right. Educational never good. Denominational never good. There'll never be an organization ever substitute the upper room experience. Amen. There'll never be a school that'll ever take the place of Pentecost. It can't be. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. That's what we need today. Get back to the Bible experience. Amen. Christians that are born again, that are washed in the blood of the Lamb, made white, regenerated, twice born. Amen. What the world needs today. A revival, an old time revival. Yes. The kind that St. Paul had in about AD 66. Now, my brother, sister, we watched this mixed multitude going up. After a while, they begin to complain. That's what we find in every move of God. That's what you Methodists find in your church. That's what you Baptists find in your church. You Presbyterian Pentecostals, whoever you are, you find them. It's a mixed multitude. That's what it was. When John Wesley had a revival, way back in the 17th century, a mixed multitude went in. When Martin Luther had a revival, a mixed multitude went up. When the Baptists with John Smith had a revival, a mixed multitude went up. When the Pentecostal had a revival, a mixed multitude went up. And that's exactly what lays on the shelf. If it had been the real genuine articles would have stayed into the church and would have prayed these others out and I went on, there'd still be a revival in the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, and Pentecostal church. It's a mixed multitude. They went out. As soon as they got over there, they began to the plain. They'd only been out in the desert three months. They began to sell for had some garlic. If I had some leak, they were out there and had substituted angels' food for garlic and was complaining. Amen. While their gastronomic wasn't able to digest able, uh, angels' food. That's what's the matter today. We haven't had an old time Holy Ghost revival. Amen. And our spiritual gastronomics are not able to digest real good old fashioned Holy Ghost whole own revival. Amen. Amen. We need a doctor's prescription. Hey. That's Dr. Jesus' prescription. Amen. Help us, Lord. Well, get us right. Certainly, they don't hold on. They go on. They go back. Just the first little thing. Rise up. Complain. Cuss. Stew. They take a church that gets one of them things started. It's like a cancer. It'll kill the whole church. Amen. That's right. We ought to get that started and get it out. Now. When they wasn't gone very far now, I think eating angel food come down from heaven and was complaining. And they were drinking a waters from a smitten rock, the pure holy waters of life, and was complaining they were the muddy water of the night. Oh, so is it today? People say, oh, preacher, you're too narrow-minded. You take all the pleasures away from the church. When you go to preach it against these kind of things and that kind of thing. Brother, if the church stood where she professes to be, she would love the things of God and face the things of the world. Amen. Not our mixed multitude. That's what's the matter today. A mixed multitude. 
of people who desires the things of the world and wants to pity along with the church. That's what causes their stumbling and fall. That's what shuts all prayer meetings. That's what Amen. organizes all kinds of societies in the church and take out the altar off the church Amen. and the only fire starts in the basement. That's what tells a preacher to preach 15 minutes and make it out of roses or red birds or something. But I tell you, a born again church of the living God wants to hear the gospel called a man that's born to the Spirit of God. Jesus said that the man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Certainly it is. Mixed multitudes. They went out. Yes, they left the great boasting positions of Egypt, boasting in their material ideas, in their mechanical devices, in their medical science. In the way that they had in the mechanics. They were boasting of their positions. They left that to journey with the great position. And we're still complaining. Isn't that just like the mixed multitude today? And the first thing you know, they come to a place called Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea is the judgment seat, was the judgment seat of the world. The real name of the place, the meaning of it, was a great super spring that bubbled up to this a bunch of palm trees that stood in the desert or some small hut called a city, a dwelling place uh, of a nation of people or a little handful of people. And all along there were little bitty springs that bubbled up everywhere, fed from this one great big spring. What a beautiful picture of the church. Out of the desert where everything had to come to Kadesh to get water. Everything had to come to Kadesh to get water. And therefore, the one big spring and fed the other spring. That is a type of heaven. That is a type of the judgment seat of God. Or that the judgment begins at the house of God. And where this one great spring fed and the other little springs run out from it, means that heaven being the judgment seat of Christ and all the churches is giving life, water, and the judgment seat. Amen. Wherever people come to the church to be judged, the trouble of it is today people come to church and they're patted on the back. And the things is because of they pay in on the collection plates, because of they become a deacon, because they become something else. Of the church, or either uh, can drive up in a better car, or can wear a better clothes, or, or something like that. You're respected, and you're patted on the back. Brother, what we need today is some old-fashioned preachers who will call black, black, and white, white. Wow. Like John the Baptist. Amen. When he come out of the wilderness of Judea, he wasn't dressed very well. He had a piece of sheepskin around him with a leather girdle yeah. cloth of camel hair wrapped around him, and he come out preaching repentance. And when Herod took his brother Philip's wife and he married her, come over there to the meeting, I can imagine the deacon saying, don't you preach on marriage and divorce tonight, because there's a great man among us tonight. Don't you do nothing like that. And if could you imagine a man receiving the Holy Ghost Amen. in his mother's womb, never holding down on anything that was sin. John the Baptist received the Holy Ghost Amen. three months before he was born. He was dead in his mother's womb. Amen. The first speaking of the name of Jesus, he jumped Amen. and leaped in the mother's womb. Amen. Could you imagine a man that received the spirit of the baptism of the Holy Ghost three months before he was born, compromising with the things of the world? Walked right straight out and stuck his finger under his nose and said, it's not lawful for you to have her. Amen. That's the way it, it cost his head. But he's immortal tonight. Amongst those redeemed in the other world. Hey, Amen. That's not popular, but it's true. Amen. Amen. Notice. Don't get scared when I say amen. Means so be it. <laughs> Try it. Now, I know I get a little excited once in a while. You think I'm excited, but I'm not. I know where I'm at. I know just amen. exactly where I'm at. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I know who I'm talking about. The Lord amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice how beautiful. And they began to murmur and complain. And finally, they were brought to Kadesh. And when they come to Kadesh, this judgment seat, judgment. And then all the whole thing was gathered together in some glorious day. And I believe that day is at hand right now when there will be a separation between the right and the wrong. Amen. And I believe I can sufficiently prove by the scriptural authority that the mark of the beast and the seal of God, of the people of God, is soon to take place and even now taking place. Oh, yeah. The mark of the beast Amen. is the mark of apostasy. Amen. The mark of the beast was those who rejected the right. They were bored in the ear to be wrong the rest of their days. 
Those who receive the seal of God is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ephesians 4, 30 says, Read not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of your redemption. It's come to a place where a person can't stand mediocre anymore. That's right. Just like a fellow trying to go to heaven. He had a handful of tickets. The man asked him when he boarded the train, said, what's he so many tickets for? One of them was Methodist, one was Baptist, one was Christian Science, one was Seventh-day Adventist, one was everything. So what he got all these tickets for? He said, well, I'll tell you, sir. Said one kept saying, this is right and that's right, and I tried them all. So I thought I'd bring a ticket from every one of them. And he was condemned. Brother, there's only one way to get to heaven. That's through Christ Jesus Amen. being born again of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Except the man be born again, he will go out into the kingdom, said our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What a day that we're living in, friends. What a time that we're living in. What a change. What a shaking. Amen. God's always vindicated his church. God will always. I don't say they all come to Brandon Tabernacle. I don't say they all go to Wall Street. I don't say they all go to the Christian church or whatever church. I say that God in every church has his members. He has his members yeah. of his body that's born again. And they are the ones who are true to God. They're the ones who love the Lord Jesus with all their heart and with all their soul. You'll find them reading your Bible and prayer meeting, doing everything they can for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's right, but the mixed multitudes is overpowering and whelming and trying to pull them back into the things of the world. What we've got to have today is another Kadesh Barnea. Amen. Right? Where the judgment Amen. begins. Then what happened? Korah raised up and said, there's more people holy besides Moses. And he gathered a great group together. And he goes out then with this great group and he says, we are prophets and we are this and we are that. And what happened? God told Moses to separate yourself from him. And he opened up the earth and swallowed them up. That was the end of those grummers, the end of those people that went with Korah. Then what happened? God said we are going to, told Moses, send over some spies to spy out the land. Where we are going, where I promised to you, if God told him it was a good land, if God made all of his promises, that looked like ought to satisfy anybody if God said so. Right. Now, we'll, we'll every time, all oh, praise the Lord to that. But brother, the same God that made them that promise is making us every Amen. promise that he made them. Why do we doubt it? What are you trying to say, Brother Branham? Is it a mixed multitude? Yes, exactly, that's right. It's a mixed right. multitude. And we're at Kadesh right now. Or you going to make great men in the land. We've had a Jack Shooter, a Billy Graham. We've had old Roberts, Tommy Hicks, Tommy Osborne. We've had many mighty men who swept back and forth across this nation. Amen. And tonight these were bootleg George and they're in churches. Amen. And continually they go on. What's the matter? There's a mixed multitude. Amen. Let me tell you something. Let this nation not only call one hour a certain day set aside for a prayer meeting where about 1% of 1,000 will try to attend it. You let this whole nation turn to God and break up every bootleg George Amen. and every distillery and break up every booze racket place and all the things that take these little old dirty shorts off of women and make it a penitentiary offense to wear them on the street and Amen. clean up the home and the house of the church and put preachers behind the pulpit instead of some kind of electioneers cause an old-fashioned revival to come where many women will call out to God. Amen. We'll have a revival out of sweet the land. And it's the best defense we've ever had. It's the only thing in the world that'll stop the atomic bomb. Hallelujah. You have a bomb shelter under his wings. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Praise God. That is right. Notice the Kiddish Barnea comes into place where there had to be a judgment. And Moses chose 12, one out of each tribe, and he sent them over to spy out the land. When they come back, I wish you would notice what a report. Oh, they said it's a goodly land. Oh, it's a wonderful land. It's flowing with milk and honey. But ten of them said, we can't take it. We can't take it. Oh, said so we met the, the Amorites and the Midianites and, and the Canaanites and all that. Why, we look like grasshoppers inside them. They're big, big fellows, and their cities are all walled in, and there's no way for us to ever get in. Oh, our hearts are fainting within us. We can't take it. And the popular vote of the people, the people received it. But there stood two there, one named Caleb and one named Joshua, Amen. who brought back a cluster of grapes. The two men had to pack it. Amen. Caleb said, quiet yourselves Amen. before the prophet. Quiet yourselves. He said, we are well able to take it. Amen. Let's go get it immediately. Amen. 
What we need in this hour is a man to challenge the promise of God before the people. God promised the pouring out of the Pentecostal blessing in the last days. I mean a real Pentecostal pour out. And it's time for it to come. Another Katie Sparty has arrived. Yes, sir. They said we can well do it. Sure we can do it. What was it? Those cowardly church members was looking to what they could see with their eyes. But Caleb and Joshua was looking to God's promise. Amen. I don't care how much opposition they had, how big the giants looked, how big the fences looked, they were looking to God's promise. Amen. And every man and woman tonight that wants to go on with God, don't pay any attention to what the world says, whether we can or whether we can't, God promised it and that settles it. Amen. God said so. Thank you, Jesus. I like that. When God says so, that settles it forever. I tell you tonight, we've had a long lot of false pretense. We've had a lot of make-up belief. Yeah. We've had a lot of stuff that went out for a show. Certainly, the devil always throws his forerunner, not yet, as a counterfeit to scare the people. We've had a false Pentecost. We've had a false reign. We've had a false this and that. But in the midst of every bit of it, there's a genuine yeah. baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a genuine Pentecostal blessing again. There's a genuine divine healing. There's a genuine spirit. Yeah. There's a genuine people. And it's time for the march. That's right. The people at the hour of decision now, you've got to make up your mind. This church has got to make up its mind. Every man comes to a place where there's a crucial hour. There was a crucial time come where you had to make up your mind. A judgment seat you was at. You had to say, I am guilty or I'm not guilty. When you're standing before the judge, you've got to make up your mind. And tonight the Branham Tabernacle's got to make up its mind. Amen. We're either going to go on or go back. That's right. You're going back to garlic and, and leek and stuff of Egypt, or you're going on with angel food to the promised land Amen. where God made a promise. Praise the Lord. You're going on to an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival, or you'll be wishy-washy, packing around and pecking like a robin on an apple until the day you die. Amen. You've got to make your decision. Praise you can't go on. Why halt ye between two opinions, said Elijah? God be God serving. If he's not God, then don't serve him. Amen. If the real experience of God is what takes the sin out of a man's heart and not belonging to a church or belonging to a clan or belonging to an organization, which I have nothing to say against, those things are all right. If education won't bring it, we've tried many times and got leaking cisterns out of it. We thought one time when we had the big four that would settle all the wars. It yeah. didn't settle the wars. It had a leak in it. We thought one time that the educational program would save the whole world. And we educated him. What have we got? A bunch of educated atheists. Amen. That's exactly right. We thought that the societies would one time save the world. And we've come to find out that the most solid criminals we have come out of the so-called societies. Oh. Education and society will not save the world. There's only one savior for the world, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ who was freely poured out at Calvary for the remission Amen. of every sin that a man ever committed. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of his, our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. I challenge any man or woman in the name of Jesus Christ to take God at his promise tonight and see if it's right or wrong. Amen. I've seen the dead raised when the doctors walked away and pronounced them dead. I've seen the blind that have made see was total blind for years and years. I've seen the deaf and the blind and the halt and the lame, the leap and jump and praise the Lord. Amen. I've seen prostitutes come off the street and make ladies. I've seen drunkards come out of the gambling hall and they place the devices of this world and make gentlemen and saints. Amen. I challenge any man to produce something else that'll do that. I've seen men who took the alcoholics and on this and tried to be made well. Took shots, take everything and all the psychology in the world, the best psychiatrists that could be gotten to give them treatment. And failed, I've seen that same man set by the blood of Jesus Christ and made a saint of God and a preacher of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I'm a holy roller. Maybe I am. Amen. Right. But if it takes the name of holy roar to find favor with Christ and be condemned by the Amen. world, and I'm one of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I love you. 
You've got a decision to make. Your case, you can't stand much longer. Why are you halt between two opinions? Why isn't the church on fire? Why isn't the place packed out with people? Why isn't great signs and wonders done? Don't lay it on the pastor. It's you. We've got to mix all the dudes. One pulling one way and one the other. You've got to come to a time of decision. If it's a pastor, fine. Get him out and put somebody else in who will take his place. Amen. If it's a deacon, take him off the board and put somebody else in his place that will take the place. Amen. What are you going to do, brother? God put the responsibility upon you. That's it. And we've each one got to give an account for our own sins and answer today of judgment. Uh, We're in Katie's barn here. And God's word said we can take it. God's word said we can have a revival. God's word said that he had raised up in the last days all these Amen. different signs and wonders and he's done it. Every man stayed in his place. But the thing we've got to do is get together and spark a revival. Amen. Got them Amen. Your decision might come now. Your decision might come some other time. But if it's come now, you better answer to it. You say, oh, brother, I don't know. I'll make a decision someday. You've got to make it. And right now is the time to make it. There's a time when you had, when you was going with your wife, my brother. You had to make a decision whether you was going to get married or not. You had to make a decision. It might come some saying this way, you mustn't get married. Some say, well, you better get married. One say, well, you have here if you're married. Another say, you're cutting your throat. All these different things. You had to make the decision. Amen. That's right. The judgment says, Katie Sparney will come for you. Maybe some of you here just that ought to be divorced. There's got to be a time sometimes when the differences come to the family. It has to be ironed out some way. You have to make a decision. Let me tell you, my brother, tonight the decision to make is you and your wife put your arms around one another. If you're bowed before God and get on your knees and make a decision that you'll serve Jesus Christ and him only. Amen. And the divorce course will be drained dry. Amen. Right? No talk with your lawyers needed or talk with your saviors needed. That's right. The lawyer might give you advice, but the Savior can save you. Amen. The lawyer might give you some psychology, some of his psychic studies, but Jesus Christ can give you his grace and love. It'll take the place of all of it. If you're sick tonight, you've got to make a decision. Whether you're going to accept Christ as your healer or not, you can't wishy washy dilly dally with it. You've got to say, I believe him or I don't believe him. I'm going to be well or I can't. I got faith enough to be well. You've got to make your decision. Amen. If you're a sinner tonight, you've got to make your decision. You're at Katie Sparnia. You're at the place of the judgment seat. What was those little springs or churches? Representing that when our little judgment began at the house of God, Jesus said so. The, the Bible said so. A judgment gets to the house of God. We're in the house of God tonight. And you've got to make your decision. You've got to make your decision whether you will come to Christ or whether you will turn him down tonight. Every sinner in here has got to make that decision right now. You will either go out of that door a better man or woman than what you come in, or you'll go out worse than you was when you come in. You can't stand mediocre tonight. You've got to make it. It's with all my heart, now it's on, it's on my heart, now it's on your hand. You've got to make your decision. Amen. And you've got to make a decision. You've been a, maybe a good church member. Maybe you've always longed that you wanted more of God. You might want to do something for God. Remember, you're only martyr once, and that one time's the only time you're going to be martyred. And this may be the time where you've got to make your decision. You're either going to move up with God or stay where you're at. Amen. You might have to make your decision tonight. If it is, I pray that you'll throw everything loose. Remember, I don't care what it is, if it's job, if it's family, if it's loved ones, if it's associates, if it's your partners, and whoever it is, turn loose of everything. He that even puts his hand on the plow and even turns to look back, not what it is applying. Uh, That's right. Uh, Lay aside every weight and the sin that's easily beset you. What is that? Lay aside every weight and the unbelief that does the easily beset you. Uh, and run uh, this race with patience is set before you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, the Son of God, I bring this little message to a close and cast it upon the people's heart. Thou who knows the heart of all men, all women, thou who knows the heart of every boy and girl, knows the heart of every one. You know my heart from all the way from the pulpit to the janitor, Lord. You know the heart of every person. You know what we need. We do not know. The only one thing we know, we know we need Jesus. And oh, Christ of God, could you promise no, Lord, and not fulfill it? You said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. And if they ask anything in my name, I'll do it. What a challenge to our church, Lord. What a challenge to our society. What a challenge to our people tonight that you gave to us. If you like anything, ask of God. He'll give it. 
Now I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that tonight that you'll freely pour out the Holy Ghost of conviction and convict every heart of their need and mine with it, Lord, as we wait on thee in Christ's name. Now while we have our heads bowed, the sister will give us a card on the piano. I'm going to ask you a question. This might be your time of decision. How many in here is there one man or woman, boy or girl, that's a, not a Christian, that's a sinner, and you want to make a decision for Jesus Christ, and you feel that something's knocking at your heart at this time, will you raise your hand for your decision and say, I now make my decision to serve Christ. God bless you, sir. Someone else, I now make my decision. God bless you, little lady. Someone else, God bless you back there, little lady. Someone else, make your decision. I now will serve Christ. I've come to the end. I've come to the crisis. This is the hour. I'm a Kadesh Barnea. God's standing in my heart. Am I able to go over? Can I forsake my friends? Can I forsake my worldly associates? Can I cross over the bar yonder into the promised land where God promised? Will I be a Caleb? Will I be a Joshua in the history of time? Will I be a Caleb or Joshua in the books of God? Or will I tonight shrink back with my cowardly yellow disposition? and move back. God, take that away from every man and woman and make them a decision maker for Christ tonight. Will you raise your hand? Aye, one more. God bless you. I see you back there. Somebody else on the outside will walk up to a window somewhere. Lay your hand on the window. Say, I'll make my decision for Christ. I'm at Katie Sparnia, Brother Branham. Is there someone else in here that would do it? Is there a backslider would say, I'll make my decision tonight? The ways of a transgressor's heart. I'll no more serve the world. From this night hence, I'll serve Christ. I now make my decision. I raise my hand. I've been a sinner. And I've been a Christian, but I've been backslidden. And I want God to be merciful to me. Is there one here tonight who is a Christian, who is a man or a person of God, but you've been dilatory in the ways? You have not done as God has told you. You've been up and down. You've listened to things you should not have listened to. You've done things that you ought not have done. And you want God to forgive you. And you want a new start from tonight on. You'll make your decision for God right now and say, I'll do it. Will you raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. You, you, you. Oh, that's fine. All right. Anybody else put up your hand. I want you to raise your hand. That's your making of God. God sees your hand. You say, what good does that do? Oh, raise your right hand one time to God and find out what it does. Raise your right hand in the court. Swear a lie and see what happens to you. You'll be caught by it. Raise your hand to God and make an oath and then watch if the Holy Spirit don't catch you by it. If God's at your heart's door. You make your decision. You're at Katie Farnia. Yonder lays every blessing that God promised you. Yonder lays an old-fashioned revival. There lays joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, patience. Laying before you and you don't possess it. It's yours. God promised it to you. Do you want it? Is there a family here about to be broke up? You argue and fuss with one another, and you know you ought to do it. You're ashamed the way you act around your wife or your husband, and you want God tonight, by grace, to give you grace to overcome, to put your arm around he or she, and say, honey, by the grace of God from the night on, our decision, I'll live for God. Raise your hand. Is there a family? Every one of your heads bowed now. Just raise your hand. I'm so thankful that there's not. But if there is, God knows I take care of all things. Is there a person here tonight that's been sick for a long time? And maybe you seem like you've been prayed for, but you haven't faith to overcome. But right now that you're going to make your decision, Lord God, from this very hour, I'm going to serve you. And I'm going out of here testifying to the grace of God that by his stripes I am healed. And I'm going to believe it from this night on. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you, you. Wonderful. That's right. I'm going to pray for you in a few minutes. I'm going to ask God to grant it to you. I wonder tonight if one of the persons that's not a Christian would like to walk up the altar and kneel down. The altar is open. If you'd like to pray an open prayer to God, the altar is open for the backslider or for the wayfaring man, whoever it might be. The altar is open. You're welcome. You're at Kadesh. The judgment is on. God is standing with outstretched arms, ready. A sick person would want to stand to their feet to make a public confession that they have now accepted Christ as their healer and say from this night on, I'll believe God and have a prayer for them. If you would, you're welcome to stand to your feet. <clears throat> All right. Three of you are standing. Just remain standing, if you will. Now, Heavenly Father, while they're on their feet, the Holy Spirit has been speaking. Now, I pray the Heavenly Father that your mercies will be granted to this man, both of them, and this woman. 
this other man that just stood. O oh, eternal God, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ were they healed. God, you brought it down. You made it real to the people. And I pray, Lord, you said no man can come to me except my Father draws him. And now the Holy Spirit has spoke to them, and nothing else can be done. They've made their decision that tonight they accept it as their healing. And they're going out of this tabernacle believing that they're going to be normally and well. Lord, it cannot fail, no more than God can fail. We realize that no man's worth any more than his word is. And tonight they believe and they have accepted. And shall they receive it, Lord, as I pray this prayer of faith for them in Christ's name. Amen. We be seated. God bless you. Believe that with all your heart. Your troubles are over. How many loved him and would want to march to Zion with him? Let's see your hands come up. Amen. That's wonderful. No matter what church you belong to. All right. Let us stand to our feet now while we sing, Take the Name of Jesus with you. All right, so sure you'll give us the name of Jesus. Now turn right around and shake hands with somebody near you. Reach out right around, shake hands. God supremely with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, raise up your hands like this and say, praise the Lord. Praise That's the Lord. good. All right. Now, as I 